Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And here I am with my new setup. Uh, you know, I've actually moved into the living room and put all my stuff out here because my Venom collection was just growing. And I know obviously there will be stuff coming out for Venom 2, you know, let there be carnage. And so I was like, I need a, I need a change. And so I've been doing this this past week and now it's Saturday and I have to go to work in like two hours. I'm up uh, pretty early. So I was like, all right, you know, the sun's just coming up. I'm like, all right, it's, it's nice. It's kind of quiet. I'm like, uh, let's get, you know, a couple of these videos in because I wanted to dive back into the Venom lore of the comic book history because obviously we have, you know, a couple Matt Gargan stories that I forgot to go over. And we're going to talk about one of those today. And then I'm going to try to record the next one right after. Ho hopefully I have enough time after recording this one. Um, and then I have a toy review that I was supposed to do before these, but I'm going to do that after this. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I got a lot of stuff I got to get through today. So uh, I'm going to try to get all these done. And then, uh, you know, hopefully over the weekend, I can edit these and post them for you guys, you know, hopefully by Sunday, if not by Monday or Tuesday or something like that. So hopefully you guys enjoy these. Uh, this episode, we're going to dive back into the comic book lore now that we've kind of wrapped up the 90s Eddie Brock stuff. And, and we kind of, you know, uh, close that gap that was there before. Um, I feel like now we can go back into the Matt Gargan stuff and talk about the few stories that we didn't mention with Matt Gargan, one of them being Moon Knight, The Death of Mark Spector. And uh, this was a book, I think, by Mike Benson, I think might have been the writer. Um, and the artist team is awesome for me because I'm such a Ghostwriter fan, uh, which is uh, we have Mark Texieri and Javier Saltaris, who kind of one does the layouts, the other one does the finishes, and they work really well together, and they've been doing comics together for many years, and they're a great team. And so the book looks really great. Uh, and I think the writing is pretty good too in this one. Um, it was funny rereading this because I remember owning this series when it came out, when, when Moon Knight got relaunched uh, right before Civil War, I w or right around that time, I was like, oh, I'm interested in this. Like, I, I, the characters always kind of intrigued me a little bit, but I remember getting into the book, but I honestly can't remember really what happened in that run um, at all. So when I went back and reread this, I was like, wow, this was like rereading it for the first time. Um, I completely forgot that this existed, and I think one day just randomly on Comixology, they were doing a, a Moon Knight sale uh, recently because, uh, I, I don't know if it was because of his appearance in Ultim uh, the, the current Spider-Man cartoon, uh, Marvel Spider-Man. I don't know if it was because of that from Maximum Venom or if it just worked out to where the sale was around the time of that episode. But uh, I thought that was cool that they did a Mark Spector sale. And as I was looking through, I saw this cover with him, you know, fighting Venom. And I'm like, wait, what is this about? What's going on? So when I went through and looked at it, I was like, oh, this is Matt Gargan. So as you know, we wrapped up some of the Eddie Brock stuff. We're going to get back to the Flash stuff. But before we get there, I wanted to kind of go through the years and pick up on some of those other stories we missed other than Eddie Brock. So this is one of them, Mark, uh, The Death of Mark Spector, which is Moon Knight, I think, volume four of this series. And... There's not a lot of venom in it, so I don't have a lot to say. I will say the story is pretty interesting. It takes place after Civil War, and there's this uh, enemy, I think called the uh, the Black Spectre or something like that. I can't remember, or the Spectre. I can't remember what his alias was uh, right now, but because uh, it happened in Volume 3. But he frames Moon Knight for murder. And so as you know, Moon Knight in the comics, he's different than the version we saw in the Ultimate, uh, not the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, uh, the uh, Marvel Spider-Man cartoon. The reason I keep calling it Ultimate is because I'm trying to catch up on that cartoon now. And I, I probably shouldn't be, I had some of them on the other day when I was cleaning and rearranging. And I was like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have uh, dove back into that because now I feel like I'm going to slip and call everything Ultimate. Um, but, uh, and obviously in the Venom comic there, you know, Eddie and everyone uh, and the, the maker has gone back to the Ultimate Universe. So yeah, the word's just kind of stuck in my head right now. So I apologize. Uh, but but yeah, so we have uh, Mark Spector was framed for murder. And Mark Spector in the comics, like I said, different than the cartoon, he has, uh, he suffers from schizophrenia. So he has uh, multiple personalities. Uh, I can't remember some of the other names he has. Uh, I'm blanking on him right now. I had him a, a few minutes ago before I started recording. Uh, but, uh, but he has a couple other aliases. Uh, that he goes by or other identities he goes by and he has this girlfriend named Marlene that he's been uh, with I think for a long time now and I think that was her in the book it was really funny when I was reading this I was like wow no one I think maybe one time they said her name because there's a love interest in this book I assumed it's Marlene because she's from you know older uh, Moon Knight stories so I was like it must be because Frenchie's in this and Frenchie's like his friend who I think lost his legs and is now has robotic legs um, and who is gay and runs a restaurant with his uh, significant other and uh, and then there's you know there was like a butler because Moon Knight's kind of like a Batman type character a little bit um, he's one of his personalities is rich and you know and everything and so um and I think Marlene, she was like in love with one of Mark Spector's personalities, but not the Mark Spector personality. So again, I think it was Marlene because I just, I'm assuming that, but no one actually says her name, I think except one time in the book. And I 
thought they said Marlene, but it was just weird. If Frenchie popped up, someone would go, hey, Frenchie, how's it going? And they would talk and, uh, you know, they would mention other characters by name. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like, you know, we're, everyone's addressing, you know, for new readers, this is good. But yet when Marlene came on a uh, panel, like no one said, hey, Marlene. <laughs> so I was like, is this Marlene or is this some new character from this new run that I don't know about? So if I'm wrong about it being Marlene, you know, just let me know in the comments. Uh, but the basic story is, you know, Mark Spector, a.k.a. Moon Knight, is framed for murder. And so now uh, he has his uh, registration card taken away because he signed up on Iron Man's side. And so now someone has, you know, framed him for murder and he's wanted. So now Tony Stark and S.H.I.E.L.D. are, you know, because Tony Stark's in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. at this moment, he's hunting down Moon Knight and he's being he's been very unsuccessful at it. And because he's so unsuccessful at it, this other group called the CSA uh, step in um, and they are decided that they are going to send in the Thunderbolts to take care of this. And remember at this time, this is where Matt Gargan comes in. He was Venom on the team, the Thunderbolts, that was run by Norman Osborn. And you had other characters like Moonstone on there and Songbird, um, Radioactive Man, Swordsman, and then obviously Bullseye has always been like their key weapon. So anytime they can't take down someone with the, the main five or six members, uh, along with Penance, they would then bring in Bullseye. He was like their last resort because they couldn't let people know he was on the team because definitely everyone else they could be reformed villains, uh, but Bullseye, like no one would believe he was going to reform. So they kept him in the shadows and only sent him in when it was necessary. So that's basically the story. That's the setup. Uh, you know, Mark Spector is out there, not in his Moon Knight costume. He starts off just wearing like all black and he's got like a ski mask on and stuff. He almost looks like a, a Sin Eater type design a little bit, uh, but he's going around beating up criminals still. And his friends are being brought in one by one being questioned. Frenchie, Marlene, all these other characters, um, you know, they're all being brought in one by one being questioned by Tony Stark. And then later the, you know, the CSA people, and they're trying to find where Mark Spector is. And that's what, that's the, pretty much the whole setup. So the Thunderbolts get sent in and they all one by one attack, uh, you know, Moon Knight and battle with them. And pretty much that's the whole book. I mean, it's just Mark on the run. He gets in a fight with Venom and Songbird and uh, a Moonstone, a couple people, and he ends up surviving that battle barely, but he gets cut in the stomach. Like he gets hurt really bad, I think by Venom. And so then he, you know, goes back to his lair and Praise to Khonshu, you know, because he has, there's this deity that he worships, um, and that's where his powers, uh, he believes, comes from and stuff. And so, uh, so it's, it's pretty, pretty cool, actually. I th actually, I like the, the story of Moon Knight, especially when you add in, like, the mental health stuff. I always found that kind of interesting that they would tackle stuff like that in comics back when he was first introduced. Nowadays, it, it feels like, oh, that's probably a common thing to do is to tackle some of those uh, topics in comics. But when it was introduced, it wasn't. It was kind of new and, and different and, and kind of neat. So, yeah, so what, you know, as Mark you know, regains himself, he goes to Frenchie, goes to his other friends. Frenchie gets attacked. Uh, these, uh, these guys called the Winos or Yos or something like that, like a group, a gang group of that kind of dress up like the Riddler almost. They have like green suits with green top hats. Uh, they actually come after Mark, uh, not Mark, but um, Frenchie's uh, significant other. I think his name is Roy or Rob, I think, Roy maybe. And, uh, and they run a restaurant together they get attacked and Roy gets beaten down. And so it's made to look like a hate crime by this gang called the Winos or whatever, because they, you know, they, I guess they have some prejudices or they're known for their prejudices. And that's why they were hired was to make it look like a hate crime. But really what they wanted to do was lure Mark Spector out. And they knew Mark Spector cared about Frenchie and, you know, wanted Frenchie to leave the life and be happy with Roy and stuff. So now that Roy has been beaten and put into the hospital and is, you know, dying, he's fading, um, he, the, he knew that would get French, they knew that would get Frenchie involved and then that would get Mark Spector involved. And so Mark Spector once again dons the costume of Moon Knight and challenges the Thunderbolts, uh, you know, now that they've lured him out into the open and he gets into another battle with them. So he fights Venom again and they get into a little tussle. He fights some of the other members. And then of course, when that doesn't work, the, you know, the Thunderbolts send in, uh, you know, Bullseye. And so Bullseye comes in and the final battle is pretty much Bullseye versus Moon Knight. So there's not a ton of Venom stuff in this, to be honest with you. It's, it's kind of a shame. Like, it, Venom doesn't have an arc in this. He doesn't have a, 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 I mean, he's just part of the team in this one. And they really make it more about Mark Spector, which makes sense. It's his book. Uh, but when he does get into fights, when Moon Knight gets into fights, it is typically with Venom like that. So clearly the artists wanted to draw Venom, you know, uh, Texieri and Satara, they were like, hey, we want more Venom in here. So they'd squeeze Venom in any battle they can in this. So that's cool for that. But other than that, you don't really get a lot of Venom stuff in here. And then the last issue, 
almost felt like you missed an issue because part five of this, um, which I think it, it runs from issues 21 to 25 of Moon Knight uh, from this series. And I, like I said, it's in a, a graphic novel called uh, Volume 4, The Death of Mark Spector. Uh, Bullseye does, you know, uh, like he just shows up. Like they end issue four with, all right, we're going to send in Bullseye. And then issue five just starts with Moon Knight fighting Bullseye in the middle of like New York streets or whatever. And you're like, wait, did I miss something? Like, where's the part where he gets actually gets sent in? And so I guess there's just a little shortcut storytelling there, which sometimes I don't mind, but this one, it felt just a tiny bit jarring. And that was probably my only negative critique of it. I really like the, um, the intensity of some of the characters. Like they, this is not set in a PG Marvel universe, uh, even though it interacts with a PG Marvel universe. Like these characters call each other curse words. Uh, some of them are bleeped out, some of them aren't. Uh, so like the B word does not get bleeped out and there's characters like Songbird and Moonstone call each other the B word a couple times. Uh, there's uh, there's definitely some F-bombs dropped and uh, you know, there's some real intensity and then the fights are pretty brutal. And there's wounds, you know, there, like there's a scene where uh, Moon Knight like chokes out uh, swordsmen and uh, and yeah, like and almost like kills them. Like it's it's pretty brutal, man. Uh, so I, I like the intensity. I like the 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 approach they brought in the story to mark specter and kind of the death of moon knight or the death of mark specter so basically what happens in this is moon knight at the end he tricks the thunderbolts into a warehouse he blows the warehouse up makes it look like he died uh, and they you know the, the thunderbolts get away and then norman osborne comes out on tv and gets to say hey we succeeded where you know tony stark didn't so there's a lot of politics here um where it, which is very reminiscent of politics in general like always there's one side will do something and then they'll blame the other side uh for doing the same thing they do or for or for doing the opposite they're like you know like right now we're going through with like the the stimulus checks and all that stuff like there's one side blaming the other and everyone's standing in each other's way but taking zero accountability for where they stand uh to prevent things and that's what's happening in this book so i was like oh that's kind of neat that i'm reading about this while this other stuff's happening currently in our climate, but is always happening in our climate because politicians and Senate members and all of them always suck all the time and they never really care about who we are. So that's what Tony Stark's going through is he's like, this is a power play. You're trying to make me look weak as a leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's why this CSA group is coming in. That's why Norman Osborn's being sent in. So of course, once Norman Osborn succeeds, you know, <laughs> succeeds in quotes, um, he, he claims that, uh, you know, he, that they defeated uh, Moon Knight and that Moon Knight is dead, and that the Thunderbolts did it where Tony Stark didn't. And so again, prep, you know, uh, boosting him up because eventually, obviously, he will become leader of the Avengers as the Dark Avengers, and this is another notch on his belt that makes him look good in the public eye. And so I was like, oh, that's interesting that they went that route, and in the Moon Knight book, kind of killing Moon Knight, but not really. They killed Mark Spector. They say it's the death of Mark Spector. So Mark uh, kind of gives up his personality in a way, and, uh, and then I think one of the other personalities, uh, Stephen, I think is his name, takes control. And he, from, so at the end of the book, it's Stephen. I think he's like in Mexico um, and he's gonna start a new life there as Stephen. Um, and so one of the other personalities now is in the light and has taken control of the body of Mark Spector. And Mark has decided to sacrifice himself, like I said, uh, and is now, you know, uh, dead quote unquote uh but not really dead uh so that's that's where the book ends and i think the next volume picks up in the south and moon knight uh teams up with punisher i think and actually that's a pretty neat book too but again it's moon knight with the steven personality and not the mark specter personality um or i think he comes up with a, another personality even um or another one emerges when he gets down south or something like that so there's a lot of things going on there but this story itself i just want to talk about a little bit it doesn't have a lot of venom in it it had some cool moon knight stuff in it so I thought I'd share it. So uh, if you guys haven't read it and you want to, definitely check it out. You can pick it up on Comixology. I don't know if it's in print anymore. Um, you could probably find the individual issues though for like a dollar in a dollar bin. Um, but I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, like I said, Benson is the writer, Salteris and uh, Texieri are the artists on the book. And I, th I thought it was cool. And in the trade, there's even like a, a one shot at the end. It's like a, a Christmas special with Moon Knight, which was kind of neat. Um, so if you you know get the trade, you'll have that as a bonus issue in there as well. So um, yeah, that's it. And Venom is more in the next story we're going to talk about. He's not a big, big part of the next story, but he at least has kind of an arc and a point in the next one. In this one, he's just part of the team that gets sent in to take down Mark Spector. So there's not a ton of uh, Venom stuff in here except in battles where you could see him so you really do get to see Moon Knight versus Venom twice in this one once when he's Moon Knight and once when he's not Moon Knight so you get to see him in you know Mark in both forms uh, when he's ready for Venom and when he's not ready for Venom and that makes it kind of fun to, to watch and, and to kind of observe and the art is great too at the same time so let me know what you guys think of this down below and uh, we're going to get to the next book we're going to talk about 
is Beyond. Uh, Beyond is a miniseries that came out uh, written by the late, great uh, Dwayne McDuffie, who I was a huge fan of. It's drawn by Scott Collins, and it's kind of like a Secret Wars type book, but a little different. So we'll get into that in the next episode. And then after that, we'll do one more toy review, and then we'll be able to dive back into the Flash Thompson stuff soon after. So I'm glad I was able to get this to you guys. I got to get ready for work. I think I can maybe record the Beyond one next. So I'm going to try to do that real quick. And then I'll do the toy review probably tomorrow morning or something like that before work tomorrow on Sunday. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.